Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Oh! Hi there! Thanks for stopping by to see this documentary about boats. I hope you enjoy it. By the way, I am Rafi Nansen, your host for today. everywhere we go, where oceans and rivers are located. People use them as mode of transportation for fishing and leisure. However, aside from the kinds of boat that we see today comes with a great story from the past. Let's find out what these boats are meant for. The Philippine bangka comes from the Austronesian bangka, which means boat, a term also found in Indonesia and the Melanesian islands such as Fiji and Samoa. In the Philippines, bangka was first recorded to refer to all kinds of small boats usually used in rivers or in shallow coastal waters. By the 18th century, the term had expanded to include all kinds of water vessels of varying sizes. In the Locust region, the Bangka was originally a small boat that was comparable to the Parao, a slowly moving small watercraft. Similarly, the Ilocano boat Bilog was a small Bangka that was hollowed out from a single log in the 19th century and eventually became a large boat made of planks. In Mindanao, during the 17th century, the Bangka was not a small boat since it could carry anywhere from 20 to 100 cavans of rice. The Jesuit priest Francisco Combes described it as carved from a single piece of log which also indicated the length and size of trees from which such large boat could be made. There were two kinds of bangka in Maguindanao based on the manner it was constructed. The binaloy made from a single log and the plank built kumpit. The bangka was more than just a boat. The technology and its entire process of construction embodied the beliefs of the indigenous culture. There were millions of superstitions involved in cutting tree and shaping the log. Nothing in its construction happened by chance. The nodes of the tree were counted and determined in which part of the boat it would fall because it would affect the fate of the boat. Such painstaking chore shows as the immense value attributed to the boats beyond the simple function of transporting people and trade. The Boat Rituals The rituals where the boat figured are most instructive in revealing the belief that they lay in the surface. One such religious procedure was called the Kibang. In Tagalog, this term meant the rocking motion of a boat on the waves. Kibang was the old tradition of asking the Anito or the spirit of the departed, what luck would befall the riders before sailing or docking. The movement was attributed as spirit's response. The Bakalag was an important design book launching ritual recorded in the 17th century. Kalag in Bicol and Visayan means soul, the root word in both Bakalag and Kalagan. In the movie Moro Ami, which was set in Bohol Islands and records the practice has even been transmitted to a modern form of wood be used for fishing.
the indigenous Seoul. Bogobos, an indigenous Philippine ethnic group in Mindanao, believe that all things possess a gimokud or soul, including man-made object. Bogobos believe that both men and animals possess two souls, the bad soul and the bad soul on the left and the good on the right. Man-made objects have only one soul, such as the soul of the betel nut box or the soul of a lime container among the ifugao. This has been rendered in English as soul stuff, alimaduan, which is different from the soul linawa. The alimaduan is that which gives the object its dis distinctive characteristic. The belief in a soul in inanimate objects, plants, and animals also explains the presence of grave goods. Since these objects have souls, they then can accompany the dead on his journey and be brought over to the afterlife along with the souls of the slaves buried with him. When these grave goods are completely decomposed materially, then they can be useful to the soul of the dead. The souls of these objects will be used by the soul of the dead person. Therefore, among the Kankanai, not a single iron nail is used in the coffin because the dead person desires that everything should disintegrate together with his corpse. Whereas in Ifugao, our forefathers believe in soul stuff or alimaduan, this would indicate the belief in another or second presence within the material object. The concept of soul stuff is the reason why there are rituals to render proper homage to important objects. A very clear example of this is the belief in the amulet or charm. Amulets are given food to mean they are preyed on, for if they lack food, they will suck and live. If an owner does not offer up sufficient prayers, he will lose the amulet. This amulet possesses a soul from whence its power emanates. Based on the concept of soul stuff, one may infer the presence of the soul in an object for so long as that object possess the qualities that are proper to it. Uh, they have to choose or pick the best wood, the old wood, pine wood, and the very big wood. They will never use nails for it. And then they will uh, make a hole out of this big wood uh, in the shape of uh, like a canoe. And then they will not use uh, uh, mechanical tools, but uh, a very specific tool to make a hole in it. And then they put the, the dead. And when they bury the dead, they have to make sure that the head follows the flow of the river. Because the belief of the people in the Kankanai area, specifically in Bugyas and Mangkayan, is that uh, the travel of the dead must uh, flow free. Morning. In the 16th century, a Datu was buried in a boat with many rowers who would serve him in the other worlds. Slaves, food and drink were placed in the vessel that would carry the dead chief to the next life. Boat Coffins the archaeological evidence of boat-shaped coffins abound from north to south of the Philippine Islands as well as in the entire Southeast Asian region. While bangka is a general term for boats, in other minor Philippine language, it is transposed as kabang. The Tagalog term for coffin is kabang. Briefly, we note that boats are used as houses up to the present by some Philippine ethnolinguistic groups, and that the shape and function of houses have been studied to closely resemble boats. If dead had been a member of a raiding team, the coffin would be in the shape of a boat, called barangay. Animals would be placed as rowers, with a slave to oversee everything. If he were a renowned sailor, he would be buried with his boat with slaves to row. It is notable that the kabang coffin is similarly made as a bangka, kabang, or boat. Often, boats are simply mentioned as made of hardwood. In Butuan City, where the oldest barangay, balangay boat, 
in the Philippines were discovered, there were also excavated coffins made from the hardwood dungon. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Once again, thank you for watching. This is your host, Raffin. Until next time, see you!